Hello and welcome to my fourth episode of my little vlog. Um, today is the 7th of September, which is absolutely crazy that we're already so far into this year. Um, I think it's been six months since I've uploaded anything. Um, this year has just been a bit crazy. Um, we've unfortunately lost a family member at the beginning of this year, which didn't really start things off great. Um, yeah, so kind of dealing with that in the beginning of the year was a lot. Um, uni starting back, having four kids, it's a lot. So this year's been a bit crazy. Um, yeah, so I feel like I should have a lot more to show for the amount of time that I haven't uploaded anything. <laughs> but yeah, I've kind of been struggling with feeling guilty when I'm crafting, um, if I'm knitting or if I'm doing something at night, I kind of have it in my head that I should be doing any work, I should be cleaning, I should be doing something else other than sitting and crafting. So yeah, um, there isn't a whole lot, I mean there's a lot to show but there's not as much as I would hope for six months of not uploading anything. Um, but yeah, so I've got a few things to show. I might just start with um, some of the items that I've actually finished. Um, I think the first one will be Bunny Odile. I always, I have my notes. Odile, I think is how you pronounce it. I made, I've had these on my wish list for so long and they're just so gorgeous. I wanted to make one for my daughter for so long um, and I think I tried maybe 12 months ago, 18 months ago to make one of these and it sat in a project bag. I think I made her up to about here. Um, I had done the eyes on the first one and just didn't pick it up again because working with, I think this is on like 2.25 or 2.5 millimeter needles, um, double pointed needles. And it just, it got so frustrating when I wasn't, I feel like, I wasn't the best knitter so um I came back to this pattern and yeah so she finally got finished we thought that we lost her I think like two weeks ago I was kind of like yep I need to upload a video and started to gather a few things to kind of wrap my brain around what I need to show and we went looking for her and we couldn't find her anywhere um I did cry a little bit because there was so much time and effort goes into these like her little dress and her little socks she has been played with so she's not in perfect condition um there's a lot of time that goes into these so I was a bit devastated um but um I decided all right I'll just start another one I got up to about here on a second dress and my daughter went through one of her bags to pack to go to her nana's and she was like I found my buddy so we found her which was really really cool I did make her a Sophie scarf but that has been misplaced which is fine I can make another Sophie scarf for the bunny um yes yeah, so she was super super fun to make once she was done um the dress comes off you can see her little tail is just I love it there is just the details and everything is uh, just it's awesome um, I am going to make some pyjamas for her. I did use um, Peyton's Bluebird Merino. So this is the yarn that I use. It's a fly fly. 100% um, Australian Merino wool. So this is the yarn that I used. I've got my little bag here with all the different colours. So she's got... Um, a jumper that you can make as well and a pair of little pyjamas with buttons so that's going to be next on my make list um, to make her some pyjamas now that I don't have to make a whole other bunny I'm kind of feeling a little bit more motivated to make the pyjamas for her um, yeah thinking that I had to make a whole other bunny yeah it was a lot um they do she did knit up quite fast actually like there's for what it is um she knitted up fast and it was a fun make um there is a there's a turtle as well 
Um, this pattern is by um, from Cynthia. Um, and yeah, absolutely love it. It was super fun. She has got a book um, that she released recently as well, which has a bunch of other cool animal patterns in it, which I would love to get. But I don't know if I could commit to making every single one that's in the book. But yeah, super, super fun, super cute. And Juniper loves her. So yeah, so that is first thing on my finished list. And the second thing I have are these two Sophie scarves. Um, I made one for me and one for Junie as well. That's hers. And this is mine. And this, I made these out of yarn that I got when we went to Melbourne. And I can't for the life of me remember what brand it was. I can picture the shop that we got it from but I can't remember the name of the shop either um but I do remember it was an Irish wool and it was in the oil um and it smelled I've still got I've still got so much of this yarn left I thought that I would maybe get one or two Sophie scarves out of it but there's still half a ball left um which I'm super excited about because it knitted up gorgeous um the colors in it are so beautiful and yeah this scarf um is by petite knit um it knitted up really quickly it was a really easy make um i think just the hardest part is keeping track of the amount of increases that you've made so that you have an even scarf because you increase and then decrease and yeah you don't want a lopsided scarf i mean i don't want a lopsided scarf so yeah super super fun make I love it. I think I'll definitely be making some more of these because it just goes with everything and it's not bulky. Um, yeah, and Judy loves hers as well. As I said, I did make one for Bunny Odile, but she's misplaced hers, which is fine. We can always make another little brown one. I think it took maybe 20 minutes, half an hour to make, which is fine. So yeah, that is the Sophie Scarf by Petite Knit. Um, Super good for yarn, like yarn busting or stash busting, whatever you want to call it. Um, it doesn't take much yarn at all and it's pretty quick to knit up, easy to take with you as well because it's only small. So yeah, that is um, another finished project. And this, I do, I did make a baby cardigan as well for my partner's boss. They had um, a baby, so I did make a little pink cardigan for them. Um, a baby cardigan but that has already been gifted so I don't have that here but um, yeah so there was a baby cardigan made as well amongst this. This one is the Log Cabin Sweater by um, At Me and Simone. This isn't a pattern per se, um, it's more of a um, I guess a step by step um, so you can make it whatever size you like yeah, you could make it crop, you could do whatever you want. But this one I made for Junie. I just washed it the, yesterday or the day before. Um, because we are in spring now, I'm kind of washing all of the big, heavier knits um, to put away. Um, yeah, I just put them in the vacuum seal bag so that they kind of stay fresh over summer. But yeah, this one... I absolutely loved making this and I think it turned out super, super well. Um, this yarn I hand dyed. This one I dyed. Most of the yarn in this is hand dyed except for, I think, these two greens. But yeah, so there's no exact size um, for this pattern. You just make the log sweater, um, log cabin pattern up until whichever size, the, like, however big you want, I guess. Um, she does recommend to use another sweater that fits you or your child or whatever size that you're making. <coughs> um, <coughs> sorry. Um, yeah, whatever size you're making and to use that as a rough guide to get to the size that you want to be making. So you do, you start with this and then add the sides at the bottom and then at the top, I guess you don't really necessarily, <coughs> sorry, 
even need to do any um, shaping around the neckline at all, really. Um, but I think I did do a few decreased rounds there from memory. And then you just go in and pick up stitches around here. And yeah, it's got really cool balloon sleeves in the back. But I absolutely loved making this. Um, yeah, I'll definitely be making more of these, I think. And it was fun to make with all of the dyed yarn as well. Um, I thought that I would have enough yarn to finish this off, but I didn't. So I had to, and I think I dyed this yarn maybe two years ago. Um, so I had to go in and dye two more skeins um, and just kind of guess which dyes that I use. But I think I did a pretty good job. I used the newly dyed ones on the sleeves. But, yeah, I think I would probably make one of these for me, I think, as well, because it was super fun and it used up a bit of yarn for here, which was always good. Oh, yeah, so that, I'm so happy with this sweater and I couldn't re recommend making them more. Um, yeah, I think maybe not a beginner knitter, but if you kind of know what you're doing and you've made sweaters before and you have a basic concept of the structure and how to, I guess, do necklines, how to pick up stitches and stuff, I think you should be completely fine making one of these. So yeah, that is the Log Cabin sweater by um, me and Simone. So yeah, absolutely loved making that one. Um, and I think that's about it that I have for things that I've actually finished and completed in that time. Yeah, I think that's about it. I do have some things on my knitting needles. I have been crocheting as well and doing a little bit of embroidery to kind of just mix things up a little bit. Um, this one I've been working on. She's a big one. So this sweater is the Truly Madly Mohair Bobble Cardigan. This is a pattern out of the um, Spotlight Maker magazine, book, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, and it is this one right there. So they recommend using the Truly Madly Mohair um, yarn as well, which I have used. So I've used this one, which is, I don't even know what color. It's not going to tell me, is it? Nope. So there's no colour on that one. Um, it's 50% acrylic, 22% mohair, 20% merino, and 8% polyester. That's And that's the Abbey Road one. I'm not sure if Spotlight still even stock this. I know our Spotlight, obviously it's spring, so the yarn section isn't stocked up like it usually is, which is understandable. Um, yeah, so, but I haven't, I haven't looked for this yarn recently, but I don't remember seeing it in there the last time that I was in store. Um, but yeah, so this one is really fun to make. Um, it's on really chunky needles, which I'm not used to knitting on really chunky needles. And I found that this made my arms and my hands really, really sore because it is, I mean, the bobbles take forever to make as well um but yeah I've kind of picked this up put it down picked it up put it down a lot as well just because it does hurt my arms and my hands sorry making it but I've done the back the front and I have started one of the sleeves um yeah and it doesn't feel it's so light as well but it is going to be so warm I think Put this like something underneath it because I think the wind will probably go through it but just sitting it on my lap and knitting with it it was keeping me so warm during winter so I think this is going to be really really good for winter just maybe with I don't know skirt or some jeans or something I don't know it's not normally something that I would pick up and make but I'm glad that I have and I think the color is pretty neutral as well I mean I could probably even wear this over this dress um this is a hinterland 
of course I love my hinterlands I have some fabric that I bought yesterday which I'll show you in a minute which I'm planning another hinterland that I'll probably cut this afternoon um yeah this is my Rotad cardigan by Anna I can never pronounce Anna's last name I'm pretty sure it is the Rotad or the Rota cardigan I don't know I I think I showed this one in my last video, but this I pick up. This is my most worn knit. I absolutely love this cardigan. Um, yeah, so anyway, this I think will look good over most things. So I'm super happy with how that's coming along. Um, obviously, we're in spring, so I don't need to stress too much about having that finished anytime soon. But yes, so speaking of Anna, I have started her one of her other cardigans this one is a rotad cardigan anna strosvard i think is how you pronounce her last name i'm going to butcher that every time i try to say it so sorry anna again um i cast this on a few days ago actually and i was kind of just knitting and knitting and watching tv i'm re-watching shetland again if anyone has watched that, it's set in Lerwick and um, Lerwick's on the top of my to-go list. Um, so I love re-watching that. Um, I digress. I was knitting this and I misread the pattern. And it says to do, I think it's 24 increase rounds or lines, whatever. Um, but I misread the pattern obviously wasn't concentrating hard enough and I read to increase each line 20 whatever times instead of I think I was meant to do them together like row one and two only 20 something times so my sweater ended up like my number count was completely off I was up to like 70 something stitches where the sleeves should have been at 40 something so I completely frogged that back last night. Um, I tried to, um, I tried to kind of frog back a certain amount and then pick up the stitches again, and it was just frustrating me. So I was like, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to start it again, which is fine because, as I said, it knit up so so fast. Um, this is on a four point needle, I think, or a four point five. I'm pretty sure this is a four. So this is a similar pattern to this one. This cardigan's made with a four ply um, and I absolutely love this. I love the length. I ran out of yarn when I was making this and I got the yarn when we were in Melbourne from Morrison Sons and I was kind of bummed that I ran out of the yarn, but I'm actually, I love the length. So I'm considering making this one the same length as this, um, but this is an eight ply. So this one will be a little bit warmer um but again it's super simple um structure i love the increases there's no holes or anything it's just basic again we'll go with anything i can wear pattern dresses with it um and the yarn that i'm using for this my poor ball of yarn this is two balls in one um because i had already joined the second um ball of yarn so this is all wound up nice and pretty at the moment um, this yarn that I'm using is actually from Kmart of all places. Um, we very rarely go to Kmart. It's not really our thing, I guess. Um, nothing against Kmart, but yeah, so we were out there maybe, oh my gosh, I want to say eight or nine months ago, and um, I found that they had a craft section and I found these balls. These were all on clearance for like $2, I think. And it's actually a really pretty yarn. I don't know if that will show up super, super well. But it's very rustic looking. Um, and it's 50% Australian wool, 50% acrylic. It's really, really soft. Um, yeah, I was super surprised at this, but I thought for $2 a ball, why not? So I grabbed a bunch of this. I got about, I got enough for a, a sweater quantity, but when I saw this pattern, I thought it would be perfect. Um, so yeah, this is what I'm using for this one. And I think it will probably cost me maybe $10 for this whole sweater, which is even better. 
and I found some perfect buttons at the op shop yesterday. Went and had a look around Saturday morning. Um, yeah, so I don't know about anybody else, but I love collecting buttons from the op shops. There's just, and I mean, there's always like bags and bags and bags of buttons. So yeah, I found some really cute buttons that'll match this yesterday, which has kind of got me pumped to get knitting on this and finish this off. I think I'll probably have this done maybe three weeks, two or three weeks, um, depending how my knitting goes. So yeah, that one I'm really excited about. And I have a crochet project. I haven't picked up my crochet needles in so long, my crochet hook in so long, but I have in my garage, I have a big bag where I guess it's like a yarn graveyard. All of my scraps and bits and pieces and yarn that <clears throat> probably won't, I won't use, but I don't want to be wasteful and throw it out. So it just all goes into this big bag. Um, yeah, so I kind of pulled that out the other day and I was like, I'm just going to start doing some granny squares and use up some of this yarn. This isn't even half of what I've made already. <clears throat> um, and it hasn't even made a dent. So, which is fine. Um, it's not going anywhere. And I mean, granny squares are so relaxing to make as well. And I love making them when I watch Midsummer Murders. Again, I don't know if anybody else watches a lot of TV while they're knitting or if they do podcasts, but I love, I love British crime dramas. That's my thing. So I love making granny squares while I watch Midsummer Murders. Um, yeah, so that's, I've been making these. I'm not sure how big I'm going to make it. I've just, I am just going to keep crocheting and Look, I'll probably be able to make four or five or even six, honestly, big blankets out of the amount of yarn that I have in this bag. Um, I don't want to waste any of it. There is just some of it's acrylic, some of it is wool, some of it I've uh, scrapped from Bendigo Woolen Mills, from Spotlight, from when I first started crocheting. I think I started a Sophie's Garden. I think from memory it was called Sophie's Garden blanket and I made it in all these bright colors this was probably 10 years ago now um and those colors I they're not me now so I have all these bright colors um like this bright blue <laughs> like I just I wouldn't use them in anything but for a granny blanket I think they're just they're perfect um yes so that's what I've been doing and I've actually been going through my granny chic book as well this is when I'm feeling I don't have any mojo for crocheting or knitting or creating I always turn to this book um this is by um Dottie Angel and Ted and Agnes um i Dottie Angel I don't think she has her Instagram anymore it's she's changed it but yeah this book is just it's gorgeous and it's kind of living my dream life and it motivates me to create and kind of create with intention um I think like with this granny blanket in my mind I can see it next to my fireplace on my farm in a few years when we finally you know build or we buy or one of those things so I've kind of been thinking a lot more recently about when I make things how are these things going to fit into life in the future um yeah and I can I think granny square blankets go with everything don't they really so yes that is another thing that I'm making uh um yeah I'm doing a little bit of cross stitch as well so this is a Ouija board cross stitch. I don't know if I still love it as much as I did when I started it maybe two years ago, I want to say. I found this in one of my cupboards when I was going through things a few weeks ago and I was like, oh, I'll finish it off and see how I go. Um, yeah, so it's going, it's getting there. 
but yeah as I said I'll finish it I definitely will finish it but I don't know if I love it as much as I did when I started it I don't know if it's very me or not but I'm sure that I have some friends who it would suit a lot more um but yeah so I'm definitely going to finish that I can't remember the name of the where I got the pattern it was on Etsy as I said it was a long time ago but yeah so that again it's a nice to kind of switch things up a little bit um instead of just knitting constantly and all the time so yeah I've got some knitting and some crocheting happening at the moment the next thing I have here is this is the superstitious pullover by Michael Sean um I'm using Bendigo Woolen Mills yarn for this but I'm about to frog this because this is the second time I've made it and I just for the life of me cannot get my tension right on this jumper and you know when you are knitting and you get really grumpy at the piece and at the pattern and you get frustrated so you just kind of put it into your basket and you ignore it um that was me a few weeks ago so I think I'm kind of I'm getting out of my mood with this jumper um, so I think I'm going to try again soon, but it is such a cool jumper. Um, this is, it's got little winnies. I chose to do Winnie, Winifred from Hocus Pocus. Uh, um, and you can do any of the sisters. You could do all three. You can do black cats. Um, and then the next um, kind of increase and then color work section is writing. You can have Hocus Pocus, I think, um, a muck, a muck um spooky there's a bunch of different ones that you can choose to do um and I love it I absolutely love it I'm not a really big Halloween person I wasn't sorry um but since Juniper our four-year-old she her birthday's on Halloween so it's kind of I don't know I have a different I have a bit of an affection to Halloween now um when all of that stuff it just reminds me of our Juni so yeah I think that this is going to be really really cool even though I won't be able to wear it on Halloween because our Halloween is summer just on summer yeah so it's usually hot um but it'll still be really cool to wear so I'm planning on doing the obviously I'm going to do Winnie again um and then I might do a muck I think around in the next color work section but yeah, so that's um, all Bendigo except for the cream. I think that was just a random ball of yarn that I had laying around. But yeah, absolutely. It's a fun make. It's a really fun make and it works out really cool. Um, but yeah, so that is another project that I am making. Um, actually, I think that's all that I have on my needles at the moment. Um, yes, but... I do have a my to make list. The first thing I have on my make list is the pajamas for Bunny Odile. Um, so I'm not sure. I think I might let Junie choose which ones, which colors to use because I always find that I procrastinate when I can't choose which colors. So I might just let her choose the colors, and that'll make things a little easier for me. Um, as I said, I did buy some yarn, um, yarn, my goodness, some fabric yesterday, just from Spotlight. This is a slub, like a cotton slub. I don't know. Of course it's dark, it's going to show up everything. Um, this is a khaki kind of, it looks almost black, but it does have a bit of green through it. Um, I've made myself some pyjamas in this fabric in a different colour and they wash so well and it doesn't go see-through and it goes super, super soft. So, um, yeah, Spotlight had a sale, has a sale on at the moment, so I went and grabbed some of that. I was looking for just plain black linen, but, um, yeah, they didn't have the one that I wanted in enough meterage to make a dress but this dress um this fabric sorry I'm going to make another hinterland I think that I might make one a sleeveless one with this is what I'm planning anyway with buttons right down the front um 
yeah, so I do want to get some black linen, as I said, and make another um, hint, just a plain hinterland like this. No buttons, no nothing. Covered in fluff now. Um, no buttons or anything, just a plain one. This one, I think, is a size, I can't remember, maybe the size 14 in the hinterland. Um, and I find that the hinterland runs really, really big. Um, I made this when I was about a size 14. At the moment, I'm about a size between a size 6 to 8, depending. So I'm going to have to cut another pattern, um, more pattern pieces for this one, which is fine because I do want it a little bit more fitted. This I have so much room in, but I love it. This linen is just so soft now, and I still think it works fine. And I love it, so I'm not getting rid of this dress. But, yeah, so I haven't made a sleeveless hinterland yet, but that's going to be the plan for this fabric. Um, I do, I bought this a while ago. So this is just some acrylic from Spotlight. My daughter's asked for a pillow for Christmas to go on her bed. Um, she's, I mean, I'm happy that she's just asked me to make her something. She's 14 almost, so blows my mind that I have an almost 14 year old um but I'm just glad that she's asked me to make her something so she wants me to make her a pillow for Christmas um I did buy a pattern um from Etsy it's a kind of a flowery I guess funky pillow um but I need to go and buy another ball of this yarn because I misread the pattern again and it calls for a thicker yarn but I think if I just double up on this it will be fine um so yeah that is another thing that I'm going to crochet soon I will cast that one maybe this week um yes for Christmas presents which is just so so wild that again we're almost I'm thinking about Christmas um all of our kids birthdays are um as I said Junie's um, end of October then we have December January February so we have Christmas right in the middle of there so I find that I have to be super organized and have things at least thought of ahead of time because it gets so crazy during the time that time of the year having birthdays as well as Christmas um so I feel like I'm already lagging a little bit this year but it's fine we'll get there so this is a Christmas present that I'm going to cast on I think this week I'm going to try to um I also want to cast on some mittens and my sister and my brother-in-law are traveling the world at the moment which I'm not jealous about at all um they've just been um through Scotland and or they've done some of the aisles which I'm just watching their videos I'm so jealous <laughs> um at the moment they're in Germany visiting family they're staying with some of our family and our cousins which is super super cool and um it is really warm over there I spoke to her yesterday and they were saying it was super super hot it was like 30 degrees but obviously Germany and Europe it gets really cold so that's got me daydreaming of when we can finally get over there um and as I said I'm kind of making more with intent and how I'm going to use things in the future and I don't know it might be a way of manifesting a European holiday as well if I start making mittens now it's just another thing to help manifest you know my holiday in Scotland and Ireland and Germany so I really want to cast on some mittens I haven't found a pattern yet um yeah so I think it would be cool just to make a plain pair and do some maybe wool embroidery on them which would be really really cool but if anyone has any nice mitten patterns feel free to comment and let me know yes so that I think is almost at the end of things um I haven't done any spinning really I've only got the same things on there on my spinning wheel as I did last time as I said um yeah having to sit down and craft without feeling guilty has been a lot this last few months which I think is why I haven't got a lot I mean I've got a bit to show but there's not a lot um when it's been six months um but I'm working on that and I think that a lot of other people would probably feel have 
an understanding of those feelings. Um, I don't know if that's being a parent or a mother where you just feel like you need to go, 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 but we don't. And I need to remind myself of that. But yes, it kind of sucks as well when crafting is, I guess, the thing that helps you relax and helps, for me personally, it helps, you know, with my anxiety and all of those things as well. And, you know, when that is something that you find hard to do without feeling guilty, it, yeah, it comes a bit of a mess. But we're getting back to things and we're getting back to making, which is really, really good. And finding that balance between everything. Um, I think next year as well is going to be big. Our youngest goes to school. She's got her orientation this week for pre for kindergarten. And I just, I can't believe that she goes to school next year. Um, yeah, so I start work next year. So it's going to be a whole other shift, um, whole other season of parenting of me, um, which I'm excited about, but I'm already anxious about finding the balance between all these things. But it's going to be fine and people do it every day and it's going to be good and it'll work out fine, I'm sure. But yes, so not much spinning, unfortunately. I did inherit another spinning wheel, um, which, I mean, when I'm not spinning, it's, yeah. But um, I inherited another spinning wheel from my mum, actually. She gave me her um, traditional Ashford. She has just bought another one. Um, I think she bought the Ashford Joy and she got it with the jumbo flyer because she does a lot of um, art yarn. She does a lot of weaving. She has a really big loom at home, which is super cool. She made this shawl for me on her loom as well, which I love. It's absolutely gorgeous. She'll kill me for not weaving in that end. Sorry, mum. Yeah, so she does a lot of um, art yarn. So she has the jumbo. Um, so I inherited her traditional, but, um, I need to buy a new flyer for it and some new upright maids. So I can't use that at the moment anyway, regardless. Um, but I will hopefully buy those things soonish and I can probably introduce that in the next video. <laughs> hopefully it's not going to be another six months before I come to you guys again, but we're here today and we've gotten this done. Um, yes, so I think that's all that we have for today, but thank you so much for joining me and listening to my rambles, and I hope that you're crafting well, and I hope that everyone is healthy and happy, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Bye!